season on the bayou with a season ending injury helping the Pelicans find their identity. After DeMarcus Cousins went down, the Pels played faster, scored more than anyone in the league, and pulled the biggest upset of the postseason, a first round sweep of Portland. Minus Cuz, that momentum has many predicting an MVP type season for Anthony Davis. But playoff and regular season Rajon Rondo has rolled out of town. What the new looks to the roster mean in New Orleans now. Uh, in my eyes, I'm, I'm the best player in the game, you know, and I, and I really feel that way, and uh, nobody can tell me different. Now you might get an argument from at least a couple of players in California, but not many others, and good for Anthony Davis. Why not? Feeling good about himself argument. as the season gets going. Uh, thanks for being there. For 10 points on the Pelicans are Nolan's season preview. I'm Matt Weiner, Greg Anthony right here, Drew Gooden right over there. The first point on the team in the Big Easy is both big and easy to identify. AD, who at 25 is probably just now entering his prime and figures to put up huge numbers in Alvin Gentry's speed sped up system rather. What would an MVP season look like for Anthony Davis? I think they they got to get home court in the first round. So uh, fourth seed or better. Yeah, I think they're going to have to get there. It, and that's important because you, you look at what they lost in terms of DeMarcus Cousins and Rajon Rondo. So you, you could make the argument that this roster on paper isn't as good as the one they had a season ago. So if they can improve, he's going to be the beneficiary of that. And I think him making that statement, first of all, I loved it because all the great ones really feel that way. He truly believes that. But he also is going to control his own narrative. Sure. And putting that out that he puts that in all of our the forefront of all of our minds. And, and I, I think it is an argument. I think the guy is that good. He had an incredible season last year. Now, on the flip side, I want to talk about what nobody else want to talk about. <laughs> Does Anthony Davis even want to be in New Orleans? I mean, that's a big topic. And if you have a superstar guy that's not fully invested in the organization, are you going to get that same player from last year or the year before? I don't know. Uh, it's a lot of free agent movement. There's been a lot of move, player movement uh, where guys want to go to their desired destination. I think Anthony Davis feels it's his turn to be outspoken right now. Hey, I'm not just the only, I want to go somewhere too. I want to go somewhere and win. Uh, and not only win, I want to be the MVP of this year. I think I'm the best guy in this league. But you can't do that without winning. And I think it's going to be really hard to be the best player in the NBA in New Orleans. And your question is based, I assume, on the change in uh, representation going to clutch sports. A lot of people dot connecting have him already in L.A. despite the fact there are two years left on that contract. Well, yeah, well, you see that, that interview? Did you see the eyebrow go up in that hood? <laughs> Something's up, you know, and I, that didn't look like a guy that was thrilled about being in New Orleans at this particular moment. Uh, DeMarcus didn't come back. Uh, free agency, I mean, they, they, they re-signed a couple guys. I think Rondo should have came back for him. I think that was a, a bad move of letting him go. But uh, Anthony Davis is just... I think it's just one of those training camps. Uh, like, here we go again. All the pressure's on me. Every, uh, everybody's going to blame me this year for if we don't get to the playoffs. Uh, I think he's looking for some love. And in that interview right there, I think it's a, it's a total million words. Yeah, and I think, I, I do think when you feel you are the best player, you want to play on the biggest stage. And I'm not talking about the city. I'm talking about in the postseason. And if you're coming off the year they just had, the front office isn't showing him necessarily we're trying to compete for a championship. So we're going to let DeMarcus go, and we're going to also let Rajon Rondo. I get the DeMarcus move from the standpoint he's coming off the Achilles. Right. But you would have thought there would have been more of an effort to bring Rajon back with the impact he had on that team, with the leadership he provided, with the fact that not only did it help Anthony, it allowed Drew Holiday to, to move over to his natural position, have arguably his best season uh, as a pro. So... Those are legitimate concerns that as a player, and we're in an era now where guys aren't going to just sit back and go play. They're going to question their front office. They're going to question the coaching staff because they are serious about winning. Because mm -hmm. as you just said, ultimately, they're going to blame you if you don't win. And oftentimes, you can't control whether you win because you don't build a team. Well, all that comes on the heels of an impressive playoff series win uh, a stunner, not so much that they beat the Blazers, but that they swept them. Um, 
What did we learn about the Pelicans and Alvin Gentry post Boogie Cousins after he went down on January 26th, played hyper fast, scored a ton? How does that uh, carry over into this season? Well, I think one, it, it shows uh, the, the brilliance really of Alvin Gentry in terms of what he was able to do. That, that's when you find out about a coach's ability. When they have to face, be faced with a lot of adversity, you lose a guy where you are all, trying to figure out how you're going to play both of them because it's not easy to play those two guys at the same time. They had figured some things out. Remember, they didn't have Drew early in the season mm -hmm. because of the injury. Uh, and then he just said, you know what, we're going to play fast. We're going to get up and down. We're going to put so much pressure on you defensively with how fast we play. And, boy, did it ever work. The question now, though, with the revamped roster, can you play that fast? You know, when you don't have a guy like Rajon Rondo who is great at pushing it ahead, kicking the ball up, when you have a point guard that throws it ahead, wings run faster. Right. Bigs run. Right. You bring it in now, Alfred Payton, not necessarily known as a pace guy. You're bringing in Jared Jack at this stage of his career, definitely not going to be a pace guy. So there are going to be a lot more questions heading into this training camp for New Orleans, not just with Anthony Davis and whether or not he's there long term. But what are we going to be this year? Are we a playoff team with arguably, you know, with definitely one of the five best players, I'd say, in the league? That's a big concern. If I got one of the five best players in the league, I should not be asking a question as to whether or not we're a playoff team. Right. Now, I would say this. I'm, I'm going to be a straight shooter on this one. The reason, and, you know, you can say coaching from Gentry's standpoint. You can say the team collectively got together after Cuz went down. But I'm going to say it was playoff Rondo at his mm -hmm. best. He did it. He showed it. He could do it in Chicago the year mm -hmm. before. They let him go. Didn't get to the playoffs last year. Uh, you, you got him going to New Orleans. We've seen another dim, uh, display of playoff Rondo. And now you let him go. So how do you fill that void? And I think they... It was a, a reach in the dark to go get Alfred Payton and bring him in because he, to me, is probably the closest thing to a Rajon Rondo out there to facilitate the team. And I call him the baby triple uh, double guys. You know, the, the seven, seven, and seven stat line. Uh, he's that guy I think that they will fill that void to be able to throw that pitch ahead pass, like you said, get the wings involved, get AD involved in the pick and roll and roll into the basket or a pop. And so I think they're trying to fill that void, but let's be, let's be real. Rondo was the guy that really took that team into the playoffs and a sweep against the Blazers. Drew Holiday was pretty spectacular as yes. well in that Blazers series in particular. But playoff Rondo was huge. 12 assists a game over two series. The best assist average of his postseason career. But he's off in La La Land with LeBron now. Our David Griffin, for one, thinks he leaves behind a very large void. But it was a really profound loss, I think, in New Orleans for them to lose Rondo. Mm -hmm. From a basketball IQ standpoint, which LeBron alluded to, from a veteran leadership standpoint, and most importantly, Drew Holiday played at an incredibly elite level when he did not have to be the one to facilitate yes. for everyone, and he could focus on being an attacking guard. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see exactly what happens with that group in the absence of Rondo, because, again, I think they're a team that could potentially slide out of the playoff picture and that's a big part of the reason why. Well, LeBron James described Rondo as cerebral. You've heard that from every coach who's ever been with him, whether they got along or not. After the fact, they say this guy is incredibly smart as a basketball player. How, how big of a hole is this? I think it's tremendous. I, I, don't, I don't know that they can replay. I think Drew hit it right on the head. Because the, the thing about Rondo, what he allowed everybody to do, and you heard David talk about it, he put everybody in a position of comfort. You know, like, he he didn't, he allowed you to not have to think. He allowed his teammates to play off instinct. He set the table. Uh, and I remember talking with Alvin Gentry about it during the season last year. He was blown away. He said he was basically my assistant head coach. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, he would come up with game plans, strategies, nuance to the game. I mean, there's just so much he brought to the table. And then that leadership element, is so critical because when you think about Drew and, and Anthony, two great guys, two great teammates, but you don't necessarily think of them as being that leader. Um, and they lead a little bit more quietly, more by example. But you do got to have somebody who's willing to challenge and willing to hold others accountable. And it can't just be your coach. So it's going to be a tremendous loss that I don't think that even if Alfred Payton statistically has a solid year, 
that he can fill that void. So it, it's going to be a challenge. I do think that New Orleans could find themselves on the outside looking in from a playoff standpoint, and that would be a shame when you have a guy of the talent of Anthony Davis. And, and how does this change Drew Holiday's season as well? You know, you heard David Griffin talking about it a moment ago that Rondo allowed him to be a different kind of player than he's sometimes been asked to be. And I think the organization saw that, and I think that's why they're comfortable starting him at the shooting guard position right now and Ilford uh, Payton coming over from Phoenix uh, to start at the point because they felt that Drew Holiday is probably the best Drew at the two. Yeah. And the team is the team is great because one thing that playing a, sh a shooting guard position, if you can have a shooting guard that could also pass the ball, mm -hmm. that's a double hit, a double -hit, uh, edge sword right there. Having a point guard that can facilitate, and not only that, you pass it to your shooting guard who can also facilitate. I mean, that's a plus. Yeah, and you know, playoff Rondo is gone. There is no playoff Peyton. <laughs> there was Gary, but yeah. Elford hasn't He's been in the, the Hall postseason of Fame right yet, now. so we don't know what playoff Peyton looks like. Uh, lots more to get to here on the Pelicans, including their summer free agents work. Julius Randle, how he figures to fit in in New Orleans next. White deodorant, huh? The breathtaking talent and athleticism of Anthony Davis on full display. He has so many weapons to work with. Ooh. Remember the Pelicans didn't have a first round draft pick in June. They did do some work later in the summer. The LeBron James deal in L.A. meant the Lakers couldn't keep Julius Randle. He signs for two years in New Orleans. The Pelicans also picked up Jaleel Okafor. The third overall pick in 2015 gets a fresh start in the Big Easy. Uh, Randle backs up Nikola Mirotic, or at least we have that on the depth chart at the moment. Two guys who were not on the roster this time last year. Uh, what, what does that mean for a full season under Alvin Gentry this time around? First of all, playing in the Western Conference, you're going to need shooting, outside shooting, especially at the, the power forward position, which is the stretch forward position in this case with Meritech. Second, I think they got a, the steal of free agency in Julius Randle, mm -hmm. signed him to a two-year deal, not that big, big contract. Not a huge deal, no. But he has, but Julius Randle, to his defense, has some room to work because I think it's a player option after this year. But I think just getting those two guys and having them battle it out, it might be nice for Miratek won't start. And Julius will get the call to start at power four. But I like him. Uh, you, you talk about a guy that uh, if Anthony Davis could find other teams and be a, a, another playmaker on the floor, I know for a fact that Julius Randle is one of those guys that can make that play or make that hockey assist mm -hmm. to get other teammates involved. Yeah, Randle and Miritich are very different types of players, and without Davis on the floor, certainly could play together. Randle likes to handle it in the open floor, and obviously Miritich is a stretch guy. Yeah, and, and I think you're going to see some lineups where the three of them are on the floor at times, just depending on matchups. Uh, and, and it's really going to be about what team finishes for Alvin Gentry in, in that group. And, and I think Randall is going to be critical. I do think of him more as a six man because he's like an instant offense guy. And with this roster now, I, I think he becomes critical for them. I mean, I think he's a guy that they're going to need to get 15, 16 points a night. Uh, but he can also be a playmaker. He's going to have to rebound. But I, I think ultimately for this team to, to sustain what we saw them get last year, I really think how they utilize Anthony Davis is, is, is going to be important. Not so much the scoring and the rebounding and defense, but I think he's got to become more of a playmaker on this team because he's one of the as unique an offensive player as we have in the league because you can use him in so many areas. You know, he, you got to double him on the block. Right. I, I, he's a guy that only averaged two assists last year because I don't think he focused more on scoring because he had Rondo and he had Drew uh, as facilitators. And he also had DeMarcus, who's a guy that gets around four or five assists a game. I think that's an area, if I'm Alvin Gentry, yeah, we got to still try to play fast, but I need you to make others better. And I think you're going to see a lot of times, let's have Drew be the big fella. You're going to see when they go post with him, he's going to have to learn to where when he gets that catch, let's say you're up as a defender. When he gets that catch and you go to double, he's going to have to be able to make these passes when guys are cutting for layups. He's going to have to make the corner opposite pass across court hitting a three-point shooting because they're going to give him spacing. The other thing I think you'll see him 
potentially he'll be a guy that can run pick and rolls. You're going to see him in four or five pick and rolls mm. where he's with a as big. As a ball handler. As said, a ball yeah. handler. A lot of times what you'll do, let's, have, let, let's say I'm going to be him, you're going to be weak side. Okay. You're guard me. They'll, they'll, a lot of times, when he gets that pass here, he'll come over and set that screen. Man, that is going to be hard to guard because he can really shoot it. He's got that pocket pass. But, again, his ability to find that shooting outside, the three-point shooting with Miritich. Uh, Ethan Moore, terrific mm -hmm. shooter of the basketball as well. So they got guys that can shoot it. I just really think you're going to see him become more of a playmaker with this group. We saw Kevin Durant, when he went to Golden State, he got better defensively, mm -hmm. blocking shots, rebound. I think that's what's got to happen for Anthony Davis. As great as he is, he's got to do more. He's got to be a guy, if he goes to four or five assists a game with what he's doing, then this team's got a chance, I think, to get back to where they were a season ago with the new additions. But that's got to happen in my estimation. Yeah, I mean, Anthony Davis is a, a catch-and-score basketball player up until this point. I mean, having the likes of Drew Holiday, Rajah, Rondo, Rondo throughout his career, I mean, it was just basically catch, finish, catch, shoot. Now, if you don't have that going on, and now you're getting double team, you're going to have to be that playmaker. You're going to have to jump up from two assists to four assists to five assists, maybe a triple-double this season in one of these games. But to, to your fact and, and what you brought up, that's a great point. I think we need to see him be more of a facilitator sometime than just a score. Some more Anthony Davis. Yeah. More, more <laughs> yeah. Anthony Davis. Bottom we line. need more. We need more. <laughs> Already great player. Now more moving forward. We've got more as well on the Pelicans. They're up to this summer. And we'll hear from the starters when we come back. Greatest players spent their summers tormenting small children <laughs> at camps. <laughs> Davis. It's been going on. No it's documented now. It's video. He's the stare down afterward. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I blocked a nine-year-old shot. Yeah. Get to the shot starters here. for more on Davis and the Pels. Skeets and Lee here from the starters with your next point about the Pelicans. It's in the form of a true or false question. Lee, true or false, the Pelicans will be better without DeMarcus Cousins. Surprisingly true, really, because when he went down, I think a lot of us thought that the Pelicans' wheels were going to fall off and they were going to scrap to make the playoffs. But they actually got really good. And then, of course, they upset the Portland Trailblazers in the first round of the playoffs and played well against the Golden State Warriors. It wasn't just all Anthony Davis. Drew Holiday was fantastic. Miritich when he Rondo, came Rondo, I know you don't Rondo, like Rondo. Rondo. He was great. Rondo was great, but he's not there anymore, of yep. course. So uh, I think the Pelicans are going to be a, a, an improved team. Davis is absolutely going to be in the conversation for MVP all season long as well. I think he realised, playing along uh, DeMarcus Cousins, that he can actually dominate the game a little bit more than he had been doing prior to that point. And I think that's right, part of the reason why we saw the Pelicans finish the season so strong. I'm not sure this is fair to Cousins, though, because the Pelicans were solid when he was healthy and there they were yep. 27 and 21 you're right they caught fire down the stretch they were 21 and 13 Miritich just seemed to pair a little more nicely with Davis because he had a little bit of shooting in there and then yep. Rondo and Drew were amazing but you know it's, I'm excited to see like Julius Randle coming in Alfred yes. Payton now has to be a bit of a point guard for them with if you know with Drew moves to the two when they play together there's some question marks here with this team, but I don't think it's all on Cousins. I don't, I don't blame him. No, I don't blame for, him for either. The, for them getting good all of a sudden. But it's, it's like the, the silver lining there to the cloud. It was like, yeah. oh, we thought it was going to be bad and it ended up turning out pretty well. And I think the uh, Pelicans management looked at that and thought, we don't want to invest a huge contract either in a guy coming off an Achilles injury, right. a big guy especially like that. So I think the Pelicans probably felt maybe our best shot is to have Davis there as our focal point and then just surround him with a lot of those other role players. You mentioned Julius Randle. I think he actually could be a nice fit alongside him there as well. Almost like a Lamar Odom type of player back in his uh, Lakers prime day. So uh, I think they will be better though. I think, I think Davis especially is going to be, uh, he's going to be MVP in top two or three for sure. Let's hear from you guys. Let us know on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Will the Pelicans be better now that they don't have cousins? He'll be better. He's on the Warriors. He's going to win a title. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you much. When the regular season is said and done, where will the Pels land in the standings? GA and Drew make their best guesses when we come back. The Pelicans open things up October 17th against the Rockets. You'll see that game on ESPN, one of 13 national TV games for them. Late in the season, a five-game homestand could determine either seeding or whether they make it into the postseason. And late, host the Warriors on April 9th. It's the Warriors' only visit to New Orleans, so unless they meet in the playoffs, 
That's potentially the only time DeMarcus Cousins comes back to play on the floor in New Orleans. I wonder if he gets a video. He only played 65 <laughs> games there. Of course he gets a video. Yeah. If he doesn't, he got it. He got it. For 65 no games, that's video It's cost effective. True, it doesn't <laughs> no, cost. It ain't going to cost them much. They can put one up. All right. Last season, 48 <laughs> wins was enough to land the sixth seed before the upset of the Blazers. This year, we're setting the bar at 45 and a half. Mm. Will they win more or fewer games than 45 and a half? That half game is tricky, I know. I'm going to say over. Okay. I, I think they'll get over. I, I, I do think that, you know, Julius Randle is going to have to have a significant impact. And the guy we didn't talk a lot about, Jalil Okafor, this is, I think, an opportunity for him to kind of reestablish himself as, a, as an NBA player. May have to establish yeah, himself. Yeah, it didn't really work out when he got went over to uh, Brooklyn last year. I know he's worked really hard. Um, and and if, if it can happen, I think with Alvin Gentry, it can happen. But, but I do think a lot of things have to happen in order for this group to get there. But Anthony Davis is such a special talent that I think they get above 45 and a half. I'm going to say less, and the reason why I'm going to say less is because of the blow of Rondo. I mean, just having that momentum, having that culture, having that taste of success lingering the end of the season, and now you come back and you don't have that guy. And we talked earlier about Al how much Alvin Gentry praised Rondo and of, of helping him facilitate out there and being an extension of the coach. And just not having that this year, I'm going to say it's, going to, it's a rebuilding year for them. They look good on paper, yeah. but I don't know if they're good enough to make it to the playoffs, and I'm going to say less. Sometimes you don't get a true picture of a player when he plays for bad teams. Maybe that's been the case with Alfred Payton, and maybe it changes with a little better team in New Orleans. We're going to find out this season. More importantly, does this team make the playoffs? Lakers likely to make the playoffs. Most everybody has Denver moving up into the top eight. There's some other teams in flux, obviously. Where do the Pelicans go? I think it's going to be a challenge. I, I, I think because I said they get to 46, 47, that that means they make it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's going to be a challenge. And we also have to factor in Anthony Davis's health. Right. You know, he's had issues in the past. Is he going to be able to not only carry more of a burden, but then also physically be able to carry that burden as well? So it, it's going to be a challenge for that group, no doubt about it. But I, I just I do believe in that talent of Anthony Davis. Well, if Anthony Davis is going to have an MVP season, they almost certainly have to be in the top eight. Absolutely. They, they crack he, it? And Anthony Davis will have to also.